time, and it's fourth down. Defending an out route is awfully difficult because the best receivers try and sell an inside move before they break to the out, and you have to respect that as a defensive guy because if you let them, what they say, cross your face or get across you in the middle of the field, usually you're beaten on a route, and that's an easier throw for the quarterback. So you ordinarily take a step over to make sure you seal that off. In this case, he was able to not only do that, but react back to the sideline and bat the ball down. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. He's got a man complete. It's a big play there for the Saints. And even 50 yards. Now that play will end up on the highlights and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Nick Fairley in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. Play action. Breeze surveying the field. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged, because now they know there's going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback, so they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him. And he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. Second down now after the pass completion. Here we go. They come up with one back. That's Ingram. Little motion now from the tight end. And they'll give it to him here. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. And now they're in the hurry up. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. A lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yards runs, and goes to one of those. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Breeze gives it up to Ingram. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Now it looks like they might be expecting a pass, an extra DB in on third and goal. And that's how the game has changed. Now we think pass first, even in goal line situations. Four yards, that gets him close to the goal line, but it also brings up a fourth and goal. And now the Saints are going to take a timeout on defense. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to break our fourth quarter time. And this one is right through. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. So the drive here ends with a field goal, and that does give them the lead, but this one is still a long ways from over. And you love to be able to look up at the scoreboard and see that you're out in front, but then you take one look across the field and see that offense is raring to come back out, and you think, I don't know, the field goals are going to be enough to get us home. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Ready. Ready. They go play action here on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there. And that'll bring up second down. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. 
Now a play fake. Breeze. Caught by Snead over the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. No, I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. And he comes back with one complete. 15 yards through the air and a first down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but they have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks. Those guys are worth their weight in gold. Marie's now on first down. Incomplete. He was looking for Mark Ingram there. And it's second down. I remember growing up playing basketball. My coach has always talked about communicating on defense, making sure you talk on defense, know where your screens are, know where the cuts are coming from, who has who. Well, guess what? It's the same thing in football. Even though there's more noise out there, you can hear all the screams of screen, screen. The defense, the bench, everyone let them know what the play was, and that's why they were able to react and knock the ball away. And here comes play number six on this drive. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. Thomas has got it, complete. Pass the 20. Touchdown, New Orleans. A big play there, 43 yards. And the Saints have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them play running back at some point in their career. That's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. That's fielded in the end zone. And last year that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee. And that's at the 25. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. He takes this for three to the 29. Tackle is made by Cameron Jordan. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. And he slings one that's incomplete. It appears that the pressure is affecting him today. Normally, he knows exactly when to get rid of the football, but today, because he's been hit a few times, he's getting rid of it a little bit too quickly. Time starting to run out here in the fourth. This defense just trying to keep the offense off the board and preserve this potential victory. Now Breeze on third down. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they have the football, and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. How oh, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball, and I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll run it now out of the gun. Now that play it. And now the Saints are going to take a timeout on defense. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. And the offense here just looking to stay in bounds, complete the short passes, and put this game on ice. 
Now Breeze. And he's got it over the middle. Flaner. And the Saints signal for another timeout. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Jarris Bird. The Saints offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Now a play fake here on first down. Flush to his right. Looking sideline incomplete. That's a really fine play there because anytime you see a comeback route, that means you cannot just stay in one spot and make a play on the ball. Go, go. You've got to move your feet and move with the receiver, and that's exactly what he did. 11, 90, 90, Back to the air on second down. It's Breeze. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Nick Fairley in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. And the defense lines up looking for one final stop. And they will be playing for the pass in this situation, not expecting any type of a run. Now Breeze. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Well, that plays a statistic that's going to go on the defensive team stat sheet. Won't necessarily reflect in hours, right, the overall game sheet. But you and I know that they keep count on pressures, hits on quarterbacks, all those things, hoping to increase that throughout the game. And here we are in the fourth quarter, and they got a big one. Yeah, it's such a close game, a very big one. Now a desperation throw. They've got his man complete. And he's brought down after a good game. Here we go, here we go. A big connection on that one. 36 yards. We know it's tough enough to pick up first downs on third down plays. <laughs> but when you go for it on fourth down, sometimes you're actually just praying. And on that play, the prayer was answered. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. Throw complete right side to Cooks. And he is out of bounds, just a yard or two shy of the 30. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. Back to throw. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Willie Sneed, 30 yards. And the Saints have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock. So tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they?